Hello, my students. I'm Nipat, and today we are going to read about a new topic that is the structure and classification of virus. We already read our basic things about microbiology. That is, what is microbes? Why you study microbiology? Read that. We also read some classifications and read characteristics of the organisms. And in our last class, we also read about the history of microbiology. Today we will uh, start a new topic about virus and we uh, complete virus within actually three classes. That is today we will read structure and classification of virus. Then we will read about the replication process of virus. Then we read some diseases related to virus. Okay, so now we start. But first of all, actually what is virus? So you already know virus is a, is a very small microorganism, okay? And if you say that it, how small it is, it's a very microscopic particles actually, which contain nucleic acids within a protective protein coat. It contains nucleic acid within a protective protein coat that replicates only inside the living cells of an organism. We already read it about in our last class. And so the study of virus is also known as virology. So now we discuss about actually virology. Virus is too small and we cannot see it actually uh, with the light microscope, okay? Uh, it's very difficult actually to see a virus with the light microscope. It's easier to see the uh, bacteria with the light microscope, but for virus it's difficult. So how we can see the viruses? We need a high resolution light microscope, okay? Or electronic microscope for watching the virus. The biggest size of virus is about 240 to 300 nanometer, and the thinnest virus is about 20 nanometer and it is smaller than a ribosome. That is organism of cell, animal cell. And then now we read about a taxonomy of a virus. We already know about what is taxonomy we read in our last class. And so if we go for a taxonomy of Ebola virus, then what will be it? If you go for phylum, then it will be Negarne varicota. Then if you go for class, then it will be Monzi virusitis. For order, it will be mononegavirals. For family, it will be phylo, viridi. For genus, it will be Ebola virus. And for species, it will be Zari Ebola virus. So that is actually taxonomy of Ebola virus. Then if you go for uh, another important characteristics virus, that is said that virus actually lie in the threshold of life and non-life. Okay, we cannot say it is a living organism, nor is say that it's a non-living organism. Actually, it uh, just stay a threshold or a line between life and non-life. And why actually? Because virus carry the following characteristics. What are they? We say non-life, why? Because they're acellular, that means they, they don't have any kinds of cell with no cell nucleus, nucleus with organelles or cytoplasm, nothing is present in virus. Therefore, they do not have the components necessary to carry metabolic activities independently. So it is called the non-life. So then why you say that is a life, okay? We say that is a life, there is some reasons, okay? And with that characteristics for saying the non-life, there is there, another important characteristics is, any living organism can move, but in case of virus, it cannot move or cannot reproduce. It's by their own. So when we say it's a life, actually we say it's life because they could only reproduce within the living cells that they infect. And they use their genetic information to force the whole cell to replicate themselves. That means they present in the whole cell and then replicate within that for their DNA and it changed the DNA of whole cell. That what happened nowadays in case of corona cases, okay? So uh, it is actually, we say that virus lie in the threshold of life and non-life because it has no cell wall, no organelles for cytoplasm. So they do not have any components that they can complete or they can carry their metabolism. 
and they cannot reproduce on their own. So they are uh, present in the categories of non-life. And in case of life, actually we say also that because they reproduce, okay, but they cannot reproduce outside of the host cell, but they reproduce within the host cell. And they can replicate the uh, chromosomes or DNAs of host cell. So we read about some characteristics, sweet and important characteristics of virus. Now we read what uh, are the differences between actually virus and bacteria. It is acellular and ribosome absent, no cell wall, protein coat present instead. Act both living and non-living organism. Viruses used to replicate, okay? And for that reason, they used to cycles that is called lytic and lysogenic. And it infects in human bodies and virus are not beneficial. It mostly infectious as well. And virus must have a living host like a plant or animal to multiply. That means it needs the host. In case of bacteria, what happened then? There is an important difference between bacteria is for killing the bacteria, we can use antibiotics. That is the last difference of virus. But in case of virus, we use actually vaccine. Antibiotics cannot kill viruses. So if you go for that, it's unicellular, ribosome present, and has peptidoglycan cell wall. We already know about that. It's a living organism. It's never act like non-living organism. And it mainly reproduces by fission or other asexual procedure. And it's localized infection. That means it's not all time the infectious agent. It can create the disease, but in some cases. But it also helps us in different cases. Of, for example, we can prepare yogurt from bacteria. Okay. And in, uh, in, we can prepare cheese from the bacteria by the help of the bacteria. So it has some beneficial effect. Then uh, it's said that bacteria can grow on non-living surfaces. And antibiotics can kill most bacteria with the exception of gram-negative bacteria. So this is the difference between virus and bacteria. And if now we go for structure of virus, then what will be the structure of virus? We already take a picture there. So what do you see there? There is something, some materials that is it uh, is a glycoprotein, then envelope, then capsid, and single double stranded uh, DNA or RNA. And actually that if you know the figure, then there is no need to uh, just uh, read the words that what is the structure of virus because same things are given in the structure. How that is? That virus consists of only nucleic acids that it will be DNA or RNA. Normally virus never contain both DNA and RNA. It contain either DNA or RNA. And in case of RNA, it could, could be single or double stranded. And a capsid or protein code which functions in protective the genetic materials. That is uh, a protein code is present there that, con that prevent or uh, that uh, protect this genetic material during viral infections and different kinds of infective processes. In case of some viruses, that is you check that there is an outer envelope there, but in some cases that envelope is not present. That means capsi uh, protein code and that single or double stranded DNA or RNA always present in virus, but this envelope is not present in every virus. Okay, so that is the structure of virus. Then we'll go for classification. In case of virus, there are lots of classification. From that thousands of classification, I actually specify some that is uh, mainly uh, we can check in different uh, books or that are mostly used for classi classified the viruses. Okay, so now we start. First classification is basis of structure. What are they? First of all, that cubical virus, you know the word that is cubical, okay? That means uh, they are also known as isoschedral or isoschedral virus. And isoschedral, uh, we know uh, isoschedral means there will be lots of head of that, okay? Or isohadron is a polyhedron with 20 faces. We'll, uh, we'll check the figure actually. 
and this isoschedral uh, sedentary virus that cubicle virus is called example it can be rio virus then our spiral virus it's also known as helical symmetry virus example paramyxovirus then our radial symmetry viruses it's uh, symmetry about a central axis example bacteriophage and lots of all that is complex virus that is they have an isoschedral isohedral and head bound a helical tail that means two kinds of characteristics will be present their structure will be present there isohedral with the helical tail a example fox virus so if we go for a figures that is fox virus and then uh, that is paramyxovirus and other viruses we will read in our next slides but here all the figure present here that is that is a bacteriophage virus okay and uh, this uh, is a myxovirus coronavirus how the um, actually viruses look like they, this is the figure and these are also some example of virus for example influenza hepatitis c rota virus adenovirus uh, bacteriophage or ebola virus this uh, this is how it look like under the microscope then it also can be classified on the basis of morphology we already know morphology means the outer characteristics or shape so first of all on the structure it is based on the shape okay and um, uh, for example filamentous isometric or icosahedral enveloped or head and tail all of the uh, things are will be vary in this classification First of all, that is capsid based on the structure of capsid. That is how the capsid will uh, carry the structure. And envelope, we already know some virus uh, contain envelope, some are not. So envelope also a factor for classification of virus. Then filamentous virus, for example, a filamentous bacteriophage is a type of bacteriophage that can infect uh, bacteria, and for uh, its filament-like or rod-like shape. For example, if it's a filament-like, we can say, it, uh, or short-like shape, we say that it's the influenza virus. As for example, we also shake that virus in our previous figure that that is influenza virus. Okay. Then our isometric virus. Isometric virus have shapes that are roughly spherical, such as polio virus or herpes virus. Okay. So uh, that are some characteristics, or that are also different kinds of virus figure. Uh, first of all, uh, we can say that that is uh, hepat uh, viridi and corona viridi. Okay, so this uh, figure is actually uh, two different family virus, not a single virus. It is. Then another uh, classification is on the basis of nucleic acids. That is, first of all, DNA virus, then RNA virus, and DNA virus uh, genome will be only DNA, and it can be um, double-stranded DNA. That is called DS, or it can be single-stranded DNA. It is called SS. Okay, example: adenovirus, herpes virus, or example like uh, parvovirus. And in case of RNA virus, its genome will be only RNA. And it also can be double and single stranded. In case of double stranded, it will be rio virus, and in case of single stranded, uh, it uh, can be uh, single stranded like SS virus. And this single stranded virus uh, again divided into two categories: one is positive sense RNA, another is negative sense RNA. For example, uh, polio virus, hepatitis A, they are positive sense, and rabies, influenza, they are negative sense. So now the question is how we can understand what is virus uh, uh, RNA viruses positive senses and what is actual negative senses. In case of that, we have to know the differences. In case of positive sense viral RNA, it's actually similar to mRNA or messenger RNA and thus can be immediately translated by the host cell. Whenever this virus enters into the body, it immediately translated by the host cell. And in case of negative senses viral RNA, it is actually complementary to messenger RNA and thus must be converted to positive sense RNA by an RNA polymerase before translation. That means negative sense uh, viral RNA for translation, first it have to convert to positive sense by enzyme RNA polymerase. Then it has to convert in negative senses viral RNA. 
So these are the difference between two viruses, RNA viruses. Now we know what is DNA and RNA virus, but uh, we have to know that what is the difference actually between two viruses. If you go for that, DNA virus is double-stranded, deoxyribose sugar, mutation rate is lower, DNA replication takes place in the nucleus, DNA virus is stable, and in DNA viruses, viral genetic code is injected in the host DNA for duplication and decoding. So what are the differences with RNA virus? If you go for difference, that is, it's a single standard mostly. Ribose sugar, RNA mutation rate is higher, and RNA replication takes place in the cytoplasm. RNA viruses are unstable mostly, and RNA viruses skip DNA for duplication and decoding. An example, it is coronavirus like that we mostly affect now and for that reason it changed its behavior continuously because its mutation rate is very higher. If, uh, and the example of DNA virus is hepatitis B virus. So we already know lots of classification and two differences between our positive and negative sense RNA with what is the difference between DNA and RNA virus. Now there is another classification on the basis of host range. That means which kind of host it will infect. Like bacteria, when it infect bacteria, it called bacteriophage. Example, T2 first, T4 first, uh, or in case of plant virus, it can infect plant like um, TMW virus, then animal virus, it infect the animals like polio, retrovirus. In case of insect virus, it also infect uh, insects, for example, uh, entomopox virus or granulosis virus. Okay, that means on the basis of force, which type of force it will attack, depend on that, it will actually vary. So, the characteristics or the classification also vary. And our next is actually on the basis of mode of transmission, that is how it transmitted, or if in fact. Uh, the animals or the human being. For example, first of all, virus transmitted through respiratory route. Example, swine flu, rhinovirus, it's transmitted through icky oral route. Example, hepatitis A virus and poliovirus. Then it can transmit it through sexual contact. For example, retrovirus. Then it also another kinds of virus present that can transmit it through blood transfusion. For example, hepatitis virus, B virus or HIV. And another kind of that, zoonotic virus. This virus transmitted through uh, actually biting or infected animals. Okay. And example like rabies, alpha virus or flavivirus. So that is our another kind of classifications. We already did five kinds of classification. And then we will read our last classification that is called Baltimore classification of virus. Um, Baltimore was a scientist, or David Baltimore, a Nobel Prize winning biologist who divided the viruses depend on some categories or based on some characteristics. He just um, classified the virus in seven categories based on what? Based on method of replication and genome type, that is DNA or RNA. So that is Baltimore classification with example. First of all, double-stranded DNA genome, example, herpes virus or pox virus, that single-stranded DNA genome, that is chicken anemia virus, double-stranded RNA genome, that is Rio virus, then single-stranded RNA genome plus sense, okay, that means that positive sense virus, that is polio virus, then single-stranded RNA genome minus sense, that means it will be negative sense RNA virus, influenza virus or rabies virus, then it is single-stranded RNA genome that replicate with DNA intermediate. That means it is a single-stranded RNA genome, but for replication, it needs the DNA. For example, retrovirus. And our last of all, that is double-stranded DNA genome that replicate with RNA intermediate. For example, hepatitis B virus. It is a double-stranded DNA genome, but for replication, it needs the RNA virus. Okay. So these are our six types of classification with the structure of virus. I wish you're clear. And for more discussion, we'll meet in our tomorrow's class. So that's for today. Thank you.